resilience plan. Senate approves 98.5 billion era 2024 supplementary federal capital territory budget. On the foreign scene, stabbing attack in China leaves four United States college instructors injured. Sports Nigeria Premier Football League finds Ayimba 10 million era over unruly behavior of players and others. Now, the details. I am Taiwo Barua. Lagos State Governor Mubaji Desonlu has officially unveiled the Lagos Climate Adaptation and Resilience Plan and the state's climate change mainstreaming strategy to build a resilient city and address flood and climate change issues. Governor Mubaji Desonlu, who was represented by his deputy, Abafemi Hamzat, stated this during the 10th Lagos International Climate Change Summit was the theme accelerating climate finance and championing local adaptation initiatives. Hamza said the summit aims to strategize on pressing issues of climate change, thereby championing the adaptation initiative and reducing emissions and carbon footprint. To say we are resilient is really an understatement. Lagos has and will continue to take significant steps towards reducing our carbon, carbon footprint and emissions. We have all been taking studies to determine our carbon emission profile and have identified significant pathways to achieve zero emissions by 2050. We must be forward looking, and we are. In his welcome address, Commissioner for the Environment, Tokumba Wahab, said the state has witnessed a transformative shift in global consciousness towards climate action, noting that each summit it has served as a platform of dialogue, collaboration, and innovation in addressing climate-related issues in the state. We we'll have urged citizens to accelerate efforts to mobilize climate funds and channel it to its projects that prioritize local adaptation initiatives. This is Need to explore ways of attracting climate partners to the transmission space to create livelihood and resilience infrastructure. We are determined to mobilize resources and on this better scale to finance the transition to a low carbon economy and support those most vulnerable to the impact of climate change. In a special session with the topic Perspective on Climate Change through the lens of high-level pioneer governance, former Governor of Lagos State Babatunde Fashala urged the state government to continue to collaborate in addressing environmental issues and key in funding available for global action on climate change. The occasion we saw in this year is the reassertion of the leadership role that we have played in all the continent in promoting the awareness about the opportunities as well as the challenges from climate change. The event was attended by the former Jeopardy Governor Femi Pedro, Royal Fathers, stakeholders in the environment sector, captain of industries, among others. The Lagos State Power State House Monitoring Office, PMO, has organized a two-day in-house training program for middle and management level offices themed globalization and emerging trends in the workplace. The training aims to equip offices with the skills and knowledge necessary to navigate the rapidly changing global landscape. Permanent Secretary Aditutu Shusoya, while declaring the workshop open, emphasized the importance of adapting to change in today's dynamic environment, noting that the only thing that is constant in life is change. Shusoya highlighted the dual challenges of globalization and technological advancement, emphasizing their impact on business operations and the nature of work. Dangote Petroleum Refinery and Petrochemicals in Lagos State has moved the supply date for Premier Motor Spirit PMS, popularly known as Petrol, from June to mid July. The President and Chief Executive Officer of the refinery, Aliko Dangote, who attributed the postponement to slight delay, assured the public that 
by second to third week in July, the premium commodity would be in the market. Nagote said this when he received a Senate delegation led by Senate President Gatswila Pabio on a tour of the $20 billion facility in Lagos. And now to the rest of the stories. The Senate has passed the 98.5 billion era 2024 supplementary budget for the Federal Capital Territory Administration. Senate President Gatula Pabio announced the passage during the plenary after consideration and adoption of a report of the Committee on the FCT on the supplementary budget by Mohammed Ibrahim. Before the consideration of the report, Iriti King Gibe had raised a point of order to officially lay complaints in her exclusion from the activities of a committee on the FCT, of which she is a member. Her point of order was noted by the Senate President, who further advised her to, in accordance with the rules, communicate her complaints and present before the House through a motion. The bill was initially passed by the House of Representatives last week. And the House of Representatives now has summoned the Minister of Transportation, Seydou Alokali, for questioning of the frequent train mishaps witnessed on the Abuja Kaduna Railway Corridor in recent times. This was sequel to the adoption of a motion of urgent public importance brought to the floor during plenary by the member representing Makafi Kundan Federal Constituency of Kaduna State, Omar Ajino. Speaking on the motion titled, An Urgent Need to Navigate the Courses of the Recurrent Derailment of Abuja Kaduna Passengers Train, which has skidded twice in the last two weeks with hundreds of passengers on board. Ajilu expressed worry over the incident, stating that across the world, rail transportation remains the safest mode of movement. The Speaker, Tajuddin Abbas, who presided over plenary, mandated the House Committee on Land Transportation to invite Minister and other relevant stakeholders in the railway sector to explain the reasons behind the repeated derailment and the measures taken by them to avert the reoccurrence of the unfortunate incident. In foreign news now, police in China has arrested a 55-year-old man after four U.S. university tutors were stabbed by an assailant at a public park in a rare attack on foreigners. In a statement, the Iowa Cornell College said the instructors are in hospital after a serious incident during a daytime visit to the park in the northern province of Jilin. China's foreign ministry said none of the injured area, none of the injured are in life-threatening condition. Police said an assailant with the surname Kui clashed with one of the Americans and then stabbed the person and went on to injure three other U.S. visitors and a Chinese tourist who tried to rescue them. On the wreck of a plane carrying Malawi's Vice President Salo Chalima has been found with no survival. Chalima and nine others were flying with a, within the country when their aircraft disappeared from airport radars. Soldiers had been searching to Kangawa Forest overnight and into the morning in an effort to find the plane. In a news briefing, President Lazarus Chakwera said the Malawi Malawi's force commander informed him that the search and rescue operation had been completed and the plane was found. He said the rescue team found the aircraft completely destroyed. In sport now, the Nigeria Premier Football League NPFL has fined Ayimba 10 million naira for the unruly behavior of its players, officials and supporters during the match against Rangers International of Inugu. Ayimba walked out of the game on stoppage time on account of a penalty awarded to the host. The league body has also fined Rangers 5 million naira for various offenses including non-provision of adequate security, encroachment on the pitch by fans and other unauthorized persons as well as sales of tickets to spectators more than stadium capacity. Both clubs have 48 hours to appeal the decision. NPFL also awarded three points and three goals to Rangers for the abandoned Oriental Derby with Enyimba. 
And that's it on the news at four. But uh, just before we go, always slow down at road junctions, intersections and pedestrian crossings. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X, Traffic Radio 961, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website at trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that the Songulu administration upgraded to higher institutions to universities? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. Lagos State Governor Babaji de Songulu has officially unveiled the Lagos Climate Adaptation and Resilience Plan and the state climate change mainstreaming strategy to build a resilient city and address flooding and climate change issues. The Senate has passed the 98.5 billion era 2024 supplementary budget for the Federal Capital Territory Administration. We also told you that police in China have arrested a 55-year-old man after four U.S. university tutors were stabbed by an assailant at a public park in a rare attack on foreigners. Finally, in sport, the Nigeria Premier Football League and PFL has fined Ayimba 10 million naira for the unruly behavior of its players, officials and supporters during the match against Rangers International of Inugu. For coming to the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. That news broadcast compiled by Adirayo Iduwalaya. I am Taiwo Barua. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon and welcome to the return trip. <laughs>